you, you, you didn't expect to come in to find like skin cancer. Then, no. Right? I remember my dad taking me to Big Rough Maruba Beach and I would hold on to his necklace while he ducked under the waves and we would spend most weekends down on the beach. So most of my memories of my dad are outside. Well, I've been outdoors since I was young. I grew up on a farm, always outdoors, but we wore a big hat. Um, when I came to the city, I was lucky to be near the beach, uh, not far from Bondi. And so I'd go to the beach at least once a week. I was quite funny. I was in the office and uh, one of the guys I work with, his wife, was in the area and I was just confused. Why is she here? Oh, she sees a dermatologist. And I said, this far from home, why here? Oh, this one uses AI. So I go, wow, oh, I'm into AI. I speak in a conference uh, a month later. And it's really touched uh, every person's job in our company. And of course, clients everywhere uh, asking, how do I take advantage of AI? So I, I just wanted to know, how do they use AI? What's the experience? So I went down and checked them out. What happened is when you came in, we did a total body photography and it's about 30 odd images, right? And this, this is his uh, image of his chest and abdomen. We can actually extract all these lesions out and so it tabulates over here. 1,300 people die every year from melanoma in Australia. Even now, we still have 16,800 cases per year, but 90% of those are successfully treated if they're detected early. So that's why we all go and get our skin checked. Now, to get an idea, there are more people dying of skin cancer in Australia than car accidents. Cancer's been a big thing in my family, uh, especially on my mum's side. There's been uh, pretty much half a dozen people uh, die from different types of cancers. And my mum's had cancer. My sister's had cancer, so it's a pretty regular uh, word I think about. I was a bit sus that I might get a skin cancer on my back or somewhere I couldn't see. You cannot imagine my shock when the thing that I can see ended up being cancerous. Right? So this one kind of caught our eyes because it's a little bit more prominent. We call this an ugly duckling. So ugly duckling is, comes in three forms. It could be a sort of absolutely no moles and you got one prominent moles, that's an ugly duck thing. You could have a few moles, but they all look the same except one, and that's the ugly duck thing. Just a story of the ugly duck thing. So we then use this, that's an emission spectrum. Okay, that's a photodiode. So if we shoot something on the skin, it will reflect light, detect it, and you'll form the emission spectrum straight away. And this will, the AI will give us a score straight away within 10 seconds. And if the score is more than seven, it's more likely to be malignant. I received an image of a nipple in a jar to my family group chat. And then I had to read backwards and I realized that it wasn't my grandpa, it wasn't an auntie or an uncle, it was my dad. And this melanoma right under his nose was found. And he had had that cut out immediately. It was very stress inducing. Now, before he operated on me, I wanted to see his qualifications, so I went outside. <laughs> Have a look at the ball. Or a lot of doctors will say, let's keep an eye on it. Yes. So when you keep an eye on it, what does that mean? That means you go home and rely on you to see if there's any change. But it's based on humans, and humans make errors. Radiologists miss things. People can get cancer, and you look back and you go, oh, it was there, but they missed it. We got this project. This was for Sydney University. It was, we call it the breast uh, system, uh, but this was essentially for radiologists to help them detect cancers. So we made software that highlighted where to look. If you acted on it, you come back and your life is safe. If you didn't act on it, next time you come, you might have a basic melanoma and it could be somewhere else. So I guess now we are pushing towards earlier detection of skin cancers, not relying totally on AI, but using AI as a tool to help us um, detect skin cancers. I was really scared that this would mean rounds of chemotherapy, and I think it would have if the AI hadn't picked it up so fast. So when people talk about AI, they often either talk about it being scary or it helping humans. Uh, I think AI in this case for uh, looking at uh, your own body and skin 
and comparing that with a, a massive database of other people that have actually had skin cancers based on the same pictures uh, is pretty incredible. I think that's, that's the future. Uh, there's still a lot of people that haven't uh, adopted it yet because we are still in the generation of doctors that started off with a magnifying glass later on the metascope and, and um, now using this is kind of frightening and uh, there's a lot of fear in doctoring and so I said is AI going to replace us? I don't think it's ever going to replace human because there's still a doctor, doctor patient relationship there. I and we, we, we need to embrace it and learn it as a tool to help us give better, better services to patients. My knowledge of sun safety when I was a kid was terrible. I got sunburnt a lot, blistered all up, days and days of pain. These days I wear shirts, I carry a hat in my bag all the time, I wear sunscreen most of the time, and uh, I'm, I practice pretty good sun safety these days. I've always had an excellent awareness of sun safety. I've grown up in a culture where getting sunburnt isn't even an option. And not just for sun safety, but also it's part of um, mainstream beauty culture these days. The best anti-aging technique is sunscreen every day. I can't wait to start trying this AI stuff too, because I've got a lot of freckles.